Hey, it's Erica. I'm one of eight artists in residency for the South of Normal, the lockdown residency. I'm part of a group of eight third year students at Minerva Art Academy in Groningen, the Netherlands. And um, this show is part of a series of shows in the month of May called May Days that we have to put on as third year students. So, but yeah, it's crazy. When we came up with this concept, we had no idea that we'd be living it in just a few months. But um, concept aside, I wanted to tell you about, about, I'm sorry, I wanted to tell you a bit about what my process is for my artwork. Uh, believe it or not, um, we don't just constantly sit and paint tulips. There's actually a lot, a lot, a lot of research that goes into making artworks in the contemporary art field. And all of that research, actual research, it allows us to make our work. So one of the key works in my pra key words in my practice is the word focus. Um, as a photographer, I have to focus my camera in order to make an image, but I'm not just a photographer, I'm a painter as well, and I also make installations. So my question was, now focus on what? I mean, somebody with ADD has a little bit of trouble focusing, especially now. So with, and since all this began, I've actually been having a bit more trouble trying to focus on my work. But I, thinking about that, what's actually really helped me is I've been wanting to focus on how artists from the past reacted to huge life-changing events. And that's given me a really, really good foundation and stepping stone. So life-changing events like um, the Spanish flu epidemic, World War I, World War II, any of the wars, um, what's going on today. All the artists, they really, really react. Pablo Picasso did a really famous piece called Guernica. And that was a reaction to horror. And from all that horror, he made something incredibly, incredibly beautiful that is known and revered in the art world and it is a reminder of so many things. But one artist in particular that I'm drawing from, from, no pun intended, is Norman Rockwell. He was an American illustrator who came up with four paintings as a reaction to a speech given by FDR in 1941 at the dawn of World War II. The speech that FDR gave Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he was the president of the United States at that time, it was an annual State of the Union that was a yearly speech given to Congress. And in it, FDR talks about, and he mentions the four essential freedoms of humanity. Norman painted those and they became a rallying cry of hope in the, place, in the face of conflict, that was World War II, which completely changed our world. These four points and these four paintings, they were the freedom of speech, the freedom from fear, the freedom from want, and the freedom of religion. Now the words from FDR in that long ago speech, they're so ever poignant and resonating today in lieu of what we're faced with with this novel coronavirus. Even fitting, today and tomorrow are Remembrance Day and Liberation Day here in the Netherlands, liberation from the Nazi powers of World War II. These powerful dates bring to my mind my grandparents and family members who fought on both fronts in the European theater against the Nazis and in the Pacific against the Japanese. I wonder how they and those of their generation, they were dubbed the greatest generation, would react to this enemy, this invisible enemy, an enemy that you cannot see, taste, smell, or touch, but it is an enemy that we are all united, or hopefully that we are united against worldwide, 
and are trying to use science and knowledge to defeat as well of the sheer amazingness of humanity so these thoughts and this process that was really started especially with FDR's strong message from the past about unity to face a known enemy as well as his four points about these freedoms of humanity just reminding us that we are human and that we are all the same in wanting these four basic things which Rockwell went on to brilliantly illustrate makes me wonder about all that is being unsaid in these trying times and what was unsaid about those things in the past. The Holocaust was an elephant in the room. It was such a painful reminder. It was only acknowledged when it was too late to save millions of lives. And so this journey of process and thought and research, it's really making me wonder right now What is the elephant in the room in this dawn of uncertainty?